Today, welcome to my channel. Please, if you are watching my channel for the first time, you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my channel, like my videos, and also comment on my channel. The political campaign for the 2023 general election in Nigeria has officially resumed, but the ruling party of Nigeria, the All Progressive Congress, is yet to commence its campaign officially. Although the main opposition party, People's Democratic Party and its candidate Alaji Atiku Abubakar have commenced their political campaign, having visited several states such as Uyo, Kaduna, and obviously this week it will be in Edo, I think today or tomorrow. The, yesterday, the media director of the Tunubu Shetima 2023 presidential campaign released a statement that the 800 page manifesto of the presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tunubu, is ready. He gave an excerpt into the policy document which will be unveiled today at the presidential banquet hall of the Aso Villa, the seat of power of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And this policy document will be unveiled by the leader of the party, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. President Mohamedou Buhari. President Mohamedou Buhari will unveil the policy document of the presidential candidate, Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu, who happens to be his friend and his benefactor in one way or the other. And this is a payback time for Ashiwaju in his words. So, the APC will also today inaugurate his over 600 member presidential revised presidential campaign council list which has the likes of Rotimi Ameshi, Ahmed Lawan and others as member of the campaign council although the vice president in the revised list is not also listed as member of the campaign council and the reason being given as we as I said previously in other videos is that the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria especially requested that the Vice President should focus on governance, as the case may be. Well, that's what we are told. Everybody, anyone can argue that that's not the reason. Maybe they don't just want him to officially play a role in the campaign, or probably he's not interested in campaigning for his SY boss, Bola Metinubo. Well, no one knows, or maybe that's the truth. Presidency specially requested that it should not, it should not be added since President Mamadou Buhari is the chairman of the campaign council. But be that as the case may be, the campaign of the APC will soon kick off and the presidential campaign council will be inaugurated today. But although the campaign officially has not kicked off for Ashwaj Bola Ahmed Tinubu, since he returned from his vacation from the United Kingdom, he has been trespassing the northern part of Nigeria, to be precise. Last weekend, he was at the Card Invest, the economic forum of Kaduna State, which, are, which was hosted by the governor of Kaduna State, Manasiru Erofa. He spoke there. On the, in, the, in Kaduna, he addressed the following day, not the following day, on Monday, to be precise. He addressed the Arewa. Fora, where he also spoke for several hours there on this plan for Nigeria. I think on Tuesday was at the Ministerial Review Conference, the last one for President Mamadou Buhari. He also spoke there. And yeah, he said that he's going to continue the good legacy of Mamadou Buhari. But despite the campaign is going on in Nigeria, and the rest of Nigeria is still faced by a natural disaster that is yet to be averted, which is the issue of flooding. I must confess, the flooding situation in Nigeria is a very, 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 very devastating one. Specifically, Kogi State is more affected by this flooding disaster. In Kogi State, as I'm talking to you now, several houses have been submerged in erosion. The flooding has been on the high side. Other states such as Ugu State, yesterday a report came out that over 4,000 houses in 
Ogun State have been submerged by water for over two weeks now in Kogi State. People are not able, thousands of people, let me not say millions, there can even be millions of people, they haven't been able to sleep in their house because their house is occupied with water. They have been sleeping in a tent makeshift camp and mosquito and other things is having free day on them and this uh, flooding is having serious economic consequences on nigeria because the flooding crisis is so bad that roads are being covered by the flood goose cannot be moved from the north to the south because kogi state acts as a gateway to the south also because through Kogi State goods can move from the north into the south into Edo State and other southern states and even in my own state Edo State the air flooding is also having impact on it in Esako Esako East also the side of uh, again a border and others is even in Onwa the river niger tributary has overflow because the this flooding that is happening in nigeria is a natural disaster not a man-made one because the rivers the river that river niger river have been they have been overflown they are they have been they are like feed up to their maximum so they are flowing to the lands and the rest and they are having great impact and effect on food production the price of commodities in nigeria is rising like never before although the price of goods has always been on the high side but it's seriously rising because now people here have been told that the bag of rice is about now 42,000 naira, if i'm not mistaken and it's really a terrible one buying a bag of rice is 42,000 naira is not a joke but be that as the case may be, the economy of Nigeria is being affected and not just the food aspect, the energy aspect. Although Nigeria has a very terrible energy, uh, uh, energy to, to, uh, in terms of the framework policy, energy production and all that. One of the major producers, the producer of gas, LNNG, which has a major factory in Boni this week also announced a first major that they are closing for operation for a while because flood has taken over the river in Boni. Although Boni itself is a water logger, it's a water, it's a river near community. So obviously can easily affect it. So that's the situation of things in Nigeria. The flooding is the major issue now in Nigeria as we speak. Many people cannot stay in their houses. Many people cannot feed. People, even in Anabra State, the same thing, flood. Benue State, the same thing. So, some persons are saying that these presidential candidates not just persons, different individuals are saying that these presidential candidates shouldn't be campaigning at this time when there is environmental crisis, flooding disaster. I think even Lagos State is still having this flood issue, but although it's a bit relatively minimized because of the tremendous work that these governors have done in those states in terms of trying to prevent it and the rest. But be that as it may, that's a major issue in Nigeria. Many people are homeless as we speak. Looking at the videos in this online that you see, it, it, it makes you feel like weeping and crying for this country. But that's the situation that we have now in Nigeria. And we just hope that this thing can be we be abated, we reduce for after some days, weeks, Probably, I don't know, I hope it doesn't get too much, but the, the tragedy about it is that this is not the first time, this is not the first time that this flooding has happened in Nigeria. I think in 2010, 
it was a very devastating flood that we also had in the uh, government of President Gulok in Billy Jonathan. I think in 2013, the same thing. But our government they don't even make provision, palliative measures to curtail the situation. But that's the dynamics of things that we have in Nigeria. Government is not working, people are suffering. So thank you very much for watching my video. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and God bless you.